look back and look at that first round series. Just talking about the plans for the NBA playoffs. And you guys went in the podcast. So, <laughs> well, what do you remember about it? A, the series, and then matching up against the Um, it was my first playoff series. Uh, I remember everything about it. Uh, we actually played them the last regular season game of the season. And Jay Kidd, if they won, they would they would get us in the playoffs. And I remember them beating us and them being so excited to match up against us. And I think that was when Jay Kidd got his 100th uh, triple double. And that was also, he was a jersey at the beginning of the season. He was, yeah. Did that, did that, did that fuel for you going into that playoff series that they wanted that matchup? I mean, it was a long time ago, but absolutely. I, like I said, I was, I was at 2008. Yeah, 14 years ago. It was my first playoff series, something I, I never forget. I was looking at the numbers. You have four, you have eight. Somebody asked Jason about for the series. He was like, I don't think it went well. We was at two totally different points in our careers. You know what I mean? I think that's what I appreciate most about Jay. You forget Jay was uh we played together on the Olympic team too right after that 2008, and so um, a couple of years later Jay Kidd then won the uh, final. You know what I mean? So I've always appreciated guys who've been able to change the way that they play. He was playing with Dirk. That's when Jay Kidd used to just shoot all threes, shoot all threes. And he, he's been a, a consummate pro and uh, uh, you know somebody I looked up to for a long time. Is there anything you took from him in 2008? You know? Nah, Jay Kidd was a totally different player than me. You know what I mean? He was always a big, tall guard, the way he shared the ball. You know what I mean? We just played totally different. Is there anything that stood out going back and watching the game one film that you feel like you guys can get better? Uh, we can always get better defensively, um, taking care of the ball and everything. But we know this game will take on a, you know, it would be totally different. You know, to take on a personality of his own, and we just got to come out and be ready. How do you, uh, with Luca, what's the mentality after the start of first? Keep trying to make it as tough as possible on him. You know what I mean? And just play the way that we supposed to play. Chris, when you first got here, how much have you guys improved at getting DeAndre the ball in those mismatches? Both you guys and DeAndre making it available. Just that connection, how much have you guys I think we've all improved, and we all just always trying to get better at it. You never know. You know, it's, it's not like each team, like, text the other team, be like, this is what we're going to do tonight. So everything during the game is just reads, and we try to figure it out as you go along. Do you feel like continuity has really helped with that as well, second year with them? Doesn't hurt. <laughs> Definitely doesn't hurt. So, obviously, uh, going through certain situations help you, but it doesn't guarantee you success. So much emotion goes into each game locally, and just the old saying, if you win one, you like you're never gonna lose one again. You lose one, you're never gonna win one again in the playoffs. How do you personally manage that? Game to game, to not getting. You gotta stay even keel. You know, as much as you can, stay off all the social stuff and all that. You know what I mean? Just stay locked in, one game at a time. In terms of uh, DA, do you like that aggressiveness and him being up in the 25, and do you have to push him to the score like that? No, I think everybody on our team wants to win the game. You know what I mean? Back off for four points, five points, you know, that that is what it is. We just try to – we've been a team like that. We just try to take whatever's available. Chris, when you look at – you were talking with Cam Johnson, he was saying that you make the game seem black and white. This happens. Like, there's a lot of gray in there for him, but he's like, we have to make it black and white. How much do you feel like when a young guy is growing, that that's what the transformation of eliminating the gray to make it more? Black and white? I think I think he's right. Sometimes there are gray areas always in the game, but the more you watch, the more you study. It. We all got tendencies. You know what I mean? We play so many games. And we all have tendencies, so every night we're just trying to – it's a game. At the end of the day, we play in a game. You know, it's a lot that goes into it, but it is a game. So we're just all trying to counter and uh, manage the game as best as possible. What does it become black and white? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's just been a lot of games over the years, a lot of watching, a lot of playing. So you just sort of – 
with anything you do in life. You know what I mean? The better, the more you stay into it, the better you get at it.